I have a terrible confession to make. I eat at Cracker Barrel on a fairly regular basis. And I look, I know they're an awful company with a terrible track record of discrimination, and it's not like they make up for it by having good food or anything. But my wife is friends with the manager of the one down here, and my father-in-law loves that stuff, so we occasionally eat there. Or rather, we did eat there back when eating in restaurants was a thing. But now, nestled as we are among several of America's least vaccinated counties and surrounded by unmasked assholes, we eat at home. But once in a while, we still eat their food at home. So last week, my wife's dad gets a hankering for some fucking gravy, fried gravy or whatever they got. So she hops online, she places an order, and to minimize contact once we're there, she pays in advance with her debit card. So I go to pick it up. Now, technically, the place has curbside pickup, but I've tried it a couple of times, and no, the fuck they don't. You can call them, and then they'll say that they're going to bring out your food, but they're not going to bring out your food. Eventually, you're going to have to go in there anyway, so I bypass all that shit, slap on a mask, head in through the nausea-scented last-minute gift for an old lady store that precedes every Cracker Barrel, and I go to the only cashier with a mask on to pick up my order. So here's the procedure. Hi, pickup order for Lusions, except I use my real name. And then, yep, here you go. And then it's already paid for, right? And then, yep. And then I take my artery spackle home and I eat it. That That's like the platonic ideal of how this should go. And that's pretty much how it does go, except with the insertion of this bitchy little maskless MAGA customer that's hovering over my shoulder the entire fucking time. Clearly, she saw my mask determined that I was on the bad guy team and wanted to glare accusingly at me the whole time. And when I get to the it's already paid for bit, she chimes in to tell me how stupid I am. She uses the patented backhanded politeness that the South is so famous for. And she says, I'd be worried giving my credit card number to some computer. Now, if you don't give your credit card number to some computer, it's just a card made of fucking plastic. Like, a, a credit card is literally just a quick way of inputting a number into a computer. But 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 I let that slide, and, and just I kind of smile politely under my mask. So she adds, seems like all anybody need is your name, and they can just take your food. And I, I kind of laugh and shrug, and the cashier just kind of laughs and shrugs, and I turn to leave. Uh, before I could escape, of course, the maskless shitty lady closes her end of the interaction with, have a blessed day now. Be honest with you, I was tempted to just turn around and yell critical race theory to scare her, but I remember I'm in a Cracker Barrel in rural Georgia. That's basically the same as yelling fire in a movie theater. So I consider saying happy holidays for a second because I know how much they hate that one, but they don't really start hating that until after Thanksgiving. So instead, I just walk out replaying her paranoid interjections in my head. I, I, I mean, imagine the scenario she's considering. Right. Yes. I've paid for my food in advance and anybody who has my last name could just walk up, say they were me and leave. But how the fuck would that person know I ordered food? Did they tap my phone? And and even if they read my name off the bag or whatever, how would they know it was already paid for? And as small as the town I live in is, how would they know nobody at the store knows me? And how would they know that the real me wouldn't be right behind them in the fucking line? And look, let's be honest here. If somebody's so desperate to gank my fucking pot roast and cider mash that they have an inside guy at Cracker Barrel, they hang out in the parking lot all fucking evening waiting to speed swipe an order. I feel like they've earned it. Right? Like when I get there, Cracker Barrel's going to realize they made a mistake and they're going to give me new food. I might have to wait an extra six or seven minutes, but I can do that. I got six, seven minutes to spare. And even in the one in a million chance that they expected me to pay for it again, the worst possible circumstances is that I wasted six minutes and spent 30 bucks buying dinner for a stranger, which is something I would do anyway. So, you know, I I spent a few minutes trying to get my head around the terrifying world of long cons and petty thefts that this lady must live in. And then it clicks with me. She has to live in that world. She has to believe that's the world she lives in because she's a Southern Baptist. She's a church-going, cross-wearing, God bless you, saying white evangelical who spent her entire life, A, mingling with the very worst people America has to offer in her church, and B, being told that everybody else is somehow even less moral than they are. I mean, if your starting point is that Christians are more moral than everybody else and you're presented with what a bunch of shitty bigots Christians are, you got to assume that the rest of us are out here stealing everybody's takeout orders for spite and drinking the adrenaline out of freshly murdered babies. 
I mean, you would think that after 450 of these things, I'd have exhausted the, you know, the problems with religion list. But you have to imagine that this is a significant driver of the conspiracy theory bullshit that motivates these people. Well, like, as a humanist, I'm sort of philosophically obligated to exhaust all the moral possibilities before I assume the worst of somebody. But as a Christian, you're philosophically obligated to do the exact fucking opposite. Your entire worldview demands that you believe that you and your elk have dibs on the very concept of morality. I, I mean, even if your group wasn't mostly culled from the shittiest people in the country, it would still be problematic. Hell, you're God. The, the, the one that you're duty bound to claim is the pinnacle of ethical perfection is a petty genocidal rapist. And then you got to be a step below them. And then you got to put the rest of us several steps below that. I mean, consider the contrast here, right? Our side has a huge group of people that disagree with them, dislike them, and don't want them to do the shit they do. But we still try to solve the problems that made them the way they are. And when they look at that, they see a vast shadowy conspiracy of sexual deviants who torture children. Their side has a huge group of people that are an actual vast shadowy conspiracy of sexual deviants who torture children. And we still try to solve the problems that made them that way.